All right. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Maureen, and I am the founder of Bar MD, Bar Prep Company. Um, so today we are doing an essay workshop. So let me get my PowerPoint up. And I just want to thank everybody for coming here um, and doing these workshops. I absolutely love doing these. So it's I have so much fun. We're going to do some definite like engagement in class today, do a little bit of practice together, talk about some tips and tricks and all sorts of different things. So let's get into it. All right. So Bar MD, that's me. And if you all have any questions, you can feel free to type them in the chat. I won't necessarily get to them like while we're in class, but I do keep it open. Um, so just, you know, uh, just so I can kind of be on the lookout. All right. So today um, I'm going to talk about how to approach California bar essays and also how to approach a crim pro essay after speaking with um, some students um, and, you know, just doing some crim pro and because crim pro hasn't come up for a couple of bar exams, I wanted to address crim pro. So I thought that that would be really helpful. Just so everybody knows, too, I'm doing another workshop on Friday. So I'm doing another workshop then. Um, so if you aren't signed up for that, make sure that you sign up for that. But first, I'm going to talk about a couple of things um, that we have that we can help you to prep for the upcoming July bar exam. Um, we have a mock exam. So if anybody has trouble or you want to do a mock exam where you don't know the essays and you don't know the PT and you want to have it graded, we have a mock exam. It's 249. You get your five essays and your PT graded. Oh, let me see. And you checked your volume. Let's see. I'm going to put on my headphones. Let's see. Can you all hear me? Oh, wait. Can you hear me now? Is that better? All right. Okay. That's much better. Okay. Okay. Good. Thank you so much for letting me know. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. Good. Um, let's just hope these <laughs> hold up because my other pair died, but I have more I can grab. Um, that's a problem when you go through like too many pairs of AirPods because you're talking all day during bar prep. So we have a mock exam that you can sign up for, um, that is a graded mock exam. So we just wanted to drop a little note about that. It's due. So we give you the materials. It's not the MBE, but we give you all the materials and then we grade it. It's five essays, one PT, all graded. And we send it back to you within about a week. Um, so it was due by July 9th, but you can submit it before that. It's totally, totally okay. So if you want to do a mock exam, I say the latest, um, hold on, is this Saturday, July 9th? Let me just make sure that is correct because I was just verifying. Oops. Yeah, Saturday, uh, sorry, I should say Sunday, July, July 9th. It should say Sunday, July 9th. I will fix that. And let me put the link if you want to sign up for that. Um, I'll put the link in the chat right now just so you all have that. So there's that. Also, which is like one of my absolute favorite things, I do a session. Um, it's in, if you are in my mastering the bar essays class, if you're at, if you're in the, that class, you already get this, so you don't need to rebuy it. But we have a class called the Final Forecast, which I don't do predictions. I don't do that. But what I do is every bar cycle, I go and I do an analysis on what issues have and have not been tested in every single subject. And then I and then I talk about those issues and I put a, a unique packet together of about 30, 35 essays that test you on all of those issues. Um, so it's a really big favorite. It's 50 bucks for that class. I should have put the price on here. Um, it's a workshop. It's on July 11th. It's at 6 p.m. That is a big, big favorite. And I it will cover every single subject. Plus we cover um, here's the link for that. Plus we cover. Um, I do like, how do you make up a rule? How do you attack an essay when you have no idea what to do, which you will get one of those. Um, so I do that. I cover um, like final, I give you a, a last two week study schedule. So for your final two weeks, what should you be doing? So it is like jam packed with all sorts of helpful um, tips. You get this essay packet with, along with all the relevant selected answers. I talk about some MBE strategies. So it's like really all sorts of different stuff. So that final forecast is a huge, huge favorite that I really um, recommend. And I've been, I because I go through every subject that I do this like full analysis, I'm usually giving you essays that like will help you 
the issues that you will see come up on the bar exam. So I've had a lot of success being spot on. Um, yeah. So, and if you do the mock exam, when should you do it? You're definitely still learning subjects. I would do it the week of like between July 4th. Um, Deanna. Yeah. Uh, I would do it between July 4th and, um, uh, what's it called? Um, and July 9th. So I would do it in that week. So I would do it like July 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, right in there. And it should say Sunday, July 9th. I was just, we were, we were debating at night, just botched that a little bit. Um, so yeah, so these two things are really great. Yeah, property. I was thinking I might do property this Friday, actually would. I might do property this Friday because property is a beast. Um, so I might do a, a workshop. I, I think I'm going to cover that on Friday's workshop. All right. And then just a few other things. Um, I have, and I will show you all this right now. Um, I have a book that just came out um, that I'm going to show you all for my essays for the Cal Mastering the California Bar Essays. And let me just share it with you all real quick, just because somebody had asked about that. Um, all right. So here is the, the thing that is different about this book that I want to show y'all is that I show you really like how do you attack all these various different issues. So we're going to get into criminal procedure. So in every single subject to give you a list of like frequently tested issues, I also show you, um, give you like tips and tricks for all the topics. But what I, what I do um, is, so the difference between like this book and anything else that's really out there um, is I show you how to write the analysis. How do you analyze each issue? How many of you all run out of time when you're writing essays too? You all run out of time a bit? When you're writing essays? Yeah, it's a huge, huge, huge problem. So one of the reasons, and like how many of you guys are like, God, there's so many rules. How do I know how much I have to memorize? What do I need to include, right? So in the book, I include, um, I absolutely, uh, Juliana, I'm so glad. Um, I include where you like can gray out the rules. So like I gray out the rules because I'm like, you don't necessarily need to include that. And there's all these little footnotes. And like, I talk about, you know, like here, 193, the defendant's conduct causing the victim's death must be voluntary. Voluntariness is an element, but it's usually really straightforward. So I'm telling you what you do and don't need to analyze. And I walk you through step-by-step step how to do everything. Um, criminal procedure, for example, like fourth amendment. So, you know, Fourth Amendment, showing how to do it, search, government conduct, standing, reasonable expectation of privacy, and then like all of the various issues that you might see. How do you organize it? How do you organize it? So, um, uh, yeah. So I'm so, so, so glad, Aline. Um, yeah. So we have, we have this that just came out. Um, I also... For those of you that I know today is an essays, uh, essays class, but I do also have a PT book, which um, in it, I have you, I show you how to do every single California PT. Um, they're all broken down. I give you a schedule. I show you like how to write the analysis, et cetera. Um, so let me give you all I have. Let me go back to, um, yeah. Um, let me just show you all, I have the California PT book too. So let me just, so in the PT book, I also walk you through literally like every PT. I talk about tips and tricks for all of them. Um, I show you like, how do you actually write the analysis, which is all in here. And I, I do a lot of, I know people are visual learners. There's a study schedule. I show you like formulas for writing your analysis. I also have like step by step, how to do it, explaining everything. Like you guys, if you guys have seen my free videos, like this goes really in depth into that. Or if you're in my class, I color code things, show you really how do you do your application when you're doing a PT. So there's tons of stuff in here, formulas, and then I literally walk you through every single PT. Um, except I have to add in, and I will add it in. Um, adding in the let's see. Um, objective PTs. So for every PT, we have a link here that'll take you to, so you can actually like download the materials to so do your PT yourself and print it. And then we have my marked up version. 
of it. So you can see how did I break it down? How did I deconstruct the file in the library and, and, and like notate what was important, et cetera. Plus we have my step-by-step -step answer showing you really like how to do this. And then there's a little description of each PT, some of the issues that I like, cause I've, I've, I know all of these PTs inside and out and I do tons and tons of tutoring, uh, which I'm booked up for this bar cycle. I do have other tutors though. So if anybody is looking for one, I just personally have booked and booked up, but I have people on my team that are really great. Um, but um, I've been asked so many questions. I've seen people write all these PTs a million different ways. So I address a lot of those issues here. So just wanted to show that. Let me go back to, let's see, the PowerPoint. So there's, um, yeah, the book is definitely, it doesn't have essays in it. Uh, it doesn't have essays in it. We are, and just so y'all know, we are actually exploring a version so that you can download and print the book. It, the, my issue is I have to protect my IP. Like I've just discovered people are sharing other stuff. Um, so I have to protect my IP, but we're working a, out a way so that you can actually, it would allow you to actually print a copy potentially of the book, but that's not a done deal yet. So we're working on that right now. Um, there's not essays in it, but it shows you how to do, um, it, we show you how to do the write any sort of analysis. Um, so you can take literally like any essay and, and then say, okay, like, how would I do this? I know that assessing the fourth amendment, fifth amendment, sixth amendment, how would I address those issues? And you can look at my book and say like, okay, these are the rules. Did I include this and include that? And I have literally a sentence written for each sentence of analysis and what you should do. Um, I don't have discount codes for the mock exam, Melanie, unfortunately that like I, it honestly, like that's what it costs us basically to do it. So I don't have any discounts. Um, but here are the discounts for the essay book. There's a $20 off coupon for the PT book. And then let me just show you all one last thing. And then we're going to get into the substance of this act of the workshop here, of um, getting into some current pro. So just one more second. I have this tool, which I don't know how many of you guys have, um, some of you may have used it. Um, yeah. And law students, if you're a law student, you're preparing for the bar early. You can absolutely purchase it now. Um, if you're studying for the baby bar, we're actually going to have a version of it very soon coming coming out for the upcoming October baby bar. I have some baby bar um, applicants that I work with one-on-one -on -one, um, and they love it. Like I, I previewed it with her just to like kind of get her feedback um, and then like her and a few other people. But um, yeah, so I know for the baby bar, it's also really helpful. Um, and if you, yeah, and you can definitely, you have access for it until you pass the bar basically. Um, SARX, let me show y'all. Let me just show you all. This is like, I built this for me, really, but um, let me just show y'all really quick. Sign in. So SARX is my essay database. So it's an essay database where we have organized every past, we have to add in the last couple of years, but we have every past bar, California bar essay and performance test. This is the 90 minute performance test um available and they're organized by topic so let's see here so let me share a screen so this is sarx so here's every single subject plus we have a bunch of crossovers so that's something that i don't think people really prepare for enough but if you want to see like how stuff is crossed over so for example so like here's criminal procedure right if i click on this Here's, here is the, here are the issues um, dealing with criminal procedures. So Fifth Amendment, Confrontation Clause, Due Process, Exception to the Warrant Requirement. So like this is Fourth Amendment because it's mostly in the exception to the Warrant Requirement. Exclusionary Rule, Fruit of the Poisonous Tree. So if I like say I want to do an essay to test me on the Fifth Amendment, I click on Fifth Amendment and it gives me just the essays that, that include Fifth Amendment in it. And these essays go back... Um, uh, you have, you have access until you pass basically like there is a cutoff to it, but it's basically, yeah, until you, um, it's until you pass the bar basically. So, but like, if you need it forever, like it's fine. So we can figure that out. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, yeah. So this is, this is different from bar essays and like, I love bar essays, but what this, how this is different. So like you click on an answer, this brings up, you know, the, this brings up the fact pattern. We have both selected answers in here. And then we also have an issue checklist that tells you what issues at a minimum 
did you need to address on this on this essay to pass? So this tells you the issues you needed to address. So this is normally we sell it for $199, um, but we I have with that coupon code. Um, oh, so let me just go in. It saves you, I think, $90. So it'd be $109. So it's a huge, huge discount. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so here's like Crimp Pro, but everything is in here. So this is a huge thing. <laughs> if you want to do crossovers to see what's crossed over with what, it tells you here. Um as well plus we have objective pts we have persuasive pts etc it's just everything is really in here um yeah and i we will definitely send an email out with the code as well um it is let me just go back but here is um uh, do the mock dynamic questions yeah you can definitely ask questions about it melanie um let me just give you all here is the link for the PT book. Let me just put this in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. So somebody said if you choose, if you do like the, um, we don't really care. If you have like, so somebody asked if you are, you know, using a different bar prep company, like obviously that's totally okay, but you want to do our mock exam. We're not going to, um, we are not going to, you know, like say like, oh, this is wrong or whatever. Like we will tell you like, what are the bar graders looking for? Um, Cause that's how we, that's how we grade. Like I'm not, I don't have like a very specific way that like, I'm like, you must do it this particular way um, is in how we grade. So we're definitely like, I'm not super rigid in that as long as you are spotting the right issues, doing the right analysis, et cetera. So, um, oops. Oh, sorry. That is the the books you have, the books you have until you pass the bar exam. So you just have to let us know if you, if you still need access, but you absolutely still have it. Um, it's not a problem. Um, yeah. And let me just give you all the links. Hang on one second. Here's for the essay book. There's for the essay book. Here's the final forecast. Is anybody here not taking California? Because we do have one specific for the UBE. And we don't, the, the SARX doesn't include model answers. It includes, it includes the issue checklist, though. So, it includes the two selected answers. Here's the mock exam. Um, and, the, and the books are not hard copy. The books are digital. The books are digital. And then, um, all right. And then can I just ask y'all, can I show you something I'm working on to see if y'all would be interested in it? So I should make it for, like, to release it in July. Can I just get a quick little, and I'm going to do a little, I'm going to launch a little poll. I am thinking about making, I've been working on these based on the book. So I thought I would just see if y'all were interested. <laughs> Black letter law cheat sheet. So like, this is a sample. So it's like all of criminal law, like very simple, just listing like, you know, issue element with a couple of the notes. So I don't go into like all the crazy detail, but it's just basically like, I made these for myself when I studied for the bar. Um, so I made these for myself and I have these and people ask me for this all the time and I tend to write in a way that is very simple. Um, so I just wanted to make sort of like a memori memorization cheat sheet. I know there's stuff out there like, you know, that exists, but I think the way that I write tends to be very simple. Um, and, you know, numbering things where people like them numbered, et cetera. So I think I'm gonna do this and we'll, we'll set it for release, I think July one, but no guarantees that, that it's definitely, uh, just, just wanted to like kind of feel it out and see what people are thinking. Um, all right. Thanks y'all. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Um, Adriana, just, uh, Gabby, send us an email. We'll definitely let you know. And they are, these would be California specific. Um, uh, yeah, these are, I will have the California distinctions on here. So yeah, that's something I definitely like, and these are really for the essays, not for the, P, not for the MBE, because the MBE, you need so much more detail. So yeah. Um, all right, let's go back. Let's get into this Crim Pro. The, yeah. And so somebody asked, is a PT supplement to the PT book? Yeah. You don't have to have one or the other. Um, oh yeah. Suyin. Yeah, absolutely. Send me an email. We could definitely do that. And I think you can do that too, but I will definitely look into that 100%. 
All right. So that is all of that stuff. We'll send out an email um, as well. Um, we will definitely send out an email with these codes and um, links, et cetera. All right. So quick just reminder on help our graders grade. They spend two to three minutes on each essay. They don't dig into your material. They don't like look to see like, did you get it? You know, they look for keywords. They look for thorough analysis. You've got to make it really easy for them. So um, just as a reminder, like, always keep in mind that your bar grader is spending like two minutes looking at this. So you have to make your job, your job is to make this very easy for the bar graders. Um, so this, and I've done a bunch of workshops. I've done more workshops this bar cycle than I think I ever have. And I go over this in detail in each of them. Um, so I'm gonna talk about it here uh, a bit, and then we're gonna get into, we're actually gonna do an essay. And I'm gonna talk about like, really some strategic stuff to do when you're writing an essay. The first thing that I want to talk about though, um, do you guys know that I have a podcast where it's like, obviously it's totally free. And I talked about like getting into writing essays and like the most recent episode, another episode comes out tomorrow. Um, but this, this, uh, you guys can subscribe here. Um, or you can subscribe on Spotify. Thanks. Um, <laughs> Christopher, I love that, but that sounds terrible listening to it while you work out. Um, so, but I talk about like getting into essay writing if you're having trouble like starting. Cause I, I work with people a ton. I've done this stuff for years and that is the biggest hurdle that I have to overcome when I'm, when I'm tutoring someone is people don't want to write full essays because it's hard and it sucks and it's not fun. And then usually you're not going to be very good at it initially. So then it's like, it's not fun to do something that you know you're not good at, but you have to be willing to be bad at it in order to figure out your weaknesses so you can get good at it. Right. So like you have to be willing to bad at to be bad at it in order to get good at it. So follow this process, follow this process. And I talk in the podcast that I that came out on Monday, after step four, after you write your skeletal outline, then I'm okay if you need to pause your timer. And I'll I'll go through the steps. Pause your timer, say like, okay, I hit all these issues. I need to go and look up like what these rules are. If I need to go look up what these rules are, then fine, so be it. Um, yeah. So just as a heads up, you can do that. So go look up your rules, study the black letter law, but do not just go in and like type in your rules as you're looking at it. You study the black letter law and then you, um, you study the black letter law, like quiz yourself on it and then go back and force yourself to recall the rules and type them into your essay. That's what this was. That's you typing. Um, all right, so let's get into it. So let's talk about the steps. So when I do this a bunch in my essay class, et cetera, and a bunch of my free workshops. So first thing you do is you check the call of the question. Check the call of the question, figure out what subject you're in. You gotta figure out what subject you're in. Then you jot down your subject issue checklist. And this is not a, th a list of everything you're going to address. This is just your list of like, okay, I'm in Crim Pro. What are all the things that I need to look for for Crim Pro? Right. What are all the issues so that you think really broadly when you're looking at the facts? And the reason that you do this is because often when you just get into looking at the facts, you'll be like, oh, this is the Fourth Amendment. And you'll and you kind of get narrow minded or like, you know, in torts, for example, you're like, oh, this is negligence. But you forget to sort of look for what are all the other possibilities. And this leads to missed issues. So you jot down your subject issue checklist because you're going to check yourself against that. And you go through, you read the fact pattern and your issue spotting. You go, you're like, okay, there's this fact goes to this, this fact goes to that. Okay, there's this issue, that issue. You guys know how to do that. Um, but I'm going to show you how to get better at it. Then you jot down your skeletal outline of your essay. So this is writing all of your headings and your subheadings. Um, all of your headings and your subheadings. So you jot down your skeletal outline. So you just put these in and you're not writing in your rules yet. Right. You're definitely like on the bar. You don't just write in your rules because if you run out of time at the end, I don't want you to just have a bunch of rules with no analysis. I'd rather have you have analysis without the rules. So you write your skeletal outline and then you go back to the fact pattern. And like I usually start at the top of my headings and I go through and I'm adding in all the facts under the relevant issues. So I put in the facts into my skeletal outline and I make sure that I've used every fact in the fact pattern. Or I know if there's a fact that I haven't used. So that I'm thinking about that. And it's like churning in the back of my mind as I'm going through and doing my essay. But like, where does that go? Where does that go? So we're, but we're going to put all of the facts that we can into the skeletal outline. And I'm going to talk about that today. Then you triage. You identify which issues are more important. 
which issue is more important. Kate, if you just remind me, I'll talk about that at the end, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, so you triage, you're like, where are the points in this essay, right? <laughs> One of the biggest, biggest mistakes that people make, they don't think about that before they start writing. So they just get into the essay and then they start writing. How many of you have gotten to the end of an essay and you're like, oh my God, I need another 15 minutes because I spent all this time on call one and call two and call three is massive. And you're like, oh my God, I need more time. Does that happen to anybody? Yeah, yep, a bunch of people. Yeah, exactly. That happens all the time. It's one of the biggest things. That is a failure to triage. That's a failure to triage. And that is something that is totally fixable. And that is why you don't just go in and put your headings and start writing your rules and have like a fixed mindset of what you're gonna do and how you're gonna approach the essay. So huge, huge, huge mistake is not triaging. Yeah, and it is, it's probably the hardest skill. But the way that you triage is by looking at where all the facts are and where are the counter arguments, which is something we also do when we put our facts into the, into the skeletal outline. Steps one through six take 15 to 20 minutes. So you're taking about 15 to 20 minutes from your hour. And really, the you know, that's okay. I know it sounds like a lot of time, but it's okay because you're doing your thinking. Like you're thinking, okay, these are the issues. I need to spend, you know, 15 minutes here, 20 minutes here, 10 minutes here. So you're really like allocating your time and saying, okay, like I need to make sure that I leave myself. Yeah, and even for writers, and Kim, I'll talk about this. Um, I will definitely talk about that at the end. So yeah, for handwriters, stay on and, and I'll, um, we'll do a little chat with y'all. Um, but you do have to triage. You have to think about where all the points are um, so that you can make sure that you save yourself adequate time at the end. So it's hugely important. And then, and then you do your writing, then you do your writing. So for the handwriters, you actually just do like a skeletal outline of this. And if you guys shoot me an email, um, uh, I can show you how I do like a, um, I can show you all, you, there's my email address. Um, I can show you all how I do a, just like a, a hand, if for a handwriter, how I do like a skeletal outline. So just shoot me an email and I'll send you guys a couple photos of how I organize that. All right, so here is, we're gonna do Crim Pro. Here is my Crim Pro subject issue checklist. So Crim Pro, generally speaking, proceeds chronologically. Do so you wanna just sort of see where you're at? You could also just do like Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment, but I like to sort of think of it this way. So has there been a stop, frisk, arrest, right? And then has there been a search? Has there been a search? And then if there's been a search, then there's a warrant that's required and do, do you have an exception to the warrant requirement, right? So that's really like one and two is really your Fourth Amendment issues, your Fourth Amendment issues. So really, really big. And I don't think I'm doing my analysis actually for the final forecast. I'm doing all of that tomorrow. Um, which is such a favorite class. I really encourage everybody to join that. Um, but with that, um, I don't think that there's been a big Fourth Amendment essay recently. So I'm, I'm going to definitely pull some for that. And that's why I picked a Fourth Amendment one for today. Um, and then confession or a statement that's been given, that's usually, that's going to trigger Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment. So you have to know the distinction between Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment. Um, let me, Benedetta, I can put the link in the chat. Um, it's just the Bar MD Law and Learning podcast. Here's the link. Um, so Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment. Fifth Amendment, that's Miranda, right? That is um under Miranda, you have to analyze is it a, is it a custodial interrogation? So is the person in custody? Has there been an interrogation? Um, and then has there been a waiver of Miranda? Has it been, you know, was it a voluntary waiver, et cetera? So all of those issues, has there been an invocation of the rights of the Mirandans and has it stopped, et cetera. Then also know your Sixth Amendment, right? Sixth Amendment applies after charges have been brought, right? So is it a Fifth Amendment issue? Is it a Sixth Amendment issue? Is it both, right? You have, you know, multiple statements and you have to deal with both. Then after that, there's usually some sort of lineup um, or some sort of identification. The issues that come up there are, the issues that come up with lineups are um, usually due process and also Sixth Amendment. So a right to counsel, because you have a right to counsel at all critical stages, including lineups and showups. And then they did do this, I think it was 2021, they did a big um, due process violation with a lineup. So there was an unfair lineup um, 
then exclusionary rule, and then also just your trial issues, which don't come up as much, but really it's like Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment issues that come up the most. And then the exclusionary rule and also a corollary to that, fruit of the poisonous tree. All right. So you all ready to get into an essay? Let's first, let me make sure I'm gonna put it into the chat, this fact pattern so y'all can pull up the PDF. So it's, I just put it in the chat. So let me switch over. Let me share that. So now it's on my screen, y'all should be able to see it. Let me give you all a few minutes just to read it. I'm gonna give you all five minutes. I'll give you two more minutes.
All right. So let's look at this. So Dora has moved to suppress evidence. The fact, excuse me, the fact that it says move to suppress, this tells me that I'm in crim pro land. Obviously on the bar, it's not gonna be labeled criminal law and procedure. But the fact that there's a motion to suppress is because usually the remedy for a violation of your uh, constitutional rights under for criminal law um, is a motion to suppress. So Dora has moved to suppress evidence of one, the drug detection dog's reaction, two, the small box, and three, the overheard conversation under the Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution. So everything here is under the Fourth Amendment. Everything here is under the Fourth Amendment. Um, so I'm going to go over to my, and I would do this in my exam answer. This is where I do all of this. And I jot down, this is my issue checklist, but really this is a fourth amendment. So I might make a, just a note of that. Do you guys remember what my issue checklist was though? What was my issue checklist? So what do these stand for? Stop. Stop. Search. Confession, lineup, yep, exclusionary, or fruit of the poisonous tree, and then trial, yeah. Right, so that's what this list is. That's what this list is here. All right, good. One thing that's really great to do for memorization that you guys should do every day, so like I have subject issue checklists, these are all included um in my essays course that we have and if you guys are wanting to maybe join the essays course just so you know even though like some classes have already occurred we have a less expensive version that's just access to the recordings um so for people that couldn't attend live um or if you join late and can't do all the classes live you can absolutely still join that um and it's at a reduced rate um all right so i jot down my issue checklist but i know that i'm dealing with really the fourth amendment here so Owen, a police officer, had a hunch that Dora might be selling methamphetamine from her house in the country. Every fact in here is important. So just keep that in mind. To learn more, Owen drove to Dora's house with a drug detection dog and waited until she left. Owen first walked the drug detection dog around Dora's house. At his direction, the dog jumped on the porch, sniffed the front door, and indicated the presence of methamphetamine. So often criminal procedure and many bar exam fact patterns are organized very nicely for you. All of this, or for the most part, is dealing with the drug detection dog's reaction, right? We have this first paragraph that's gonna kind of relate to everything, um, but just, you know, it's kind of nicely organized. So let's go to the next paragraph. Owen then propped a ladder on the back of the house, climbed to the top and peered into a second story bedroom window. There's so much detail in there. There's so many facts in there. He saw a small box on a bedside table, but could not read the label. He used binoculars to read the label and saw that it listed ingredients that could be used to make methamphetamine. So now he's like, okay, being like, yeah, my, my hunch is right, right? Okay, and then all of this, right? This goes to the small box, right? Which is here, the small box. Oh, is your fact pattern not showing? Sorry, y'all. Sorry about that, y'all. I thought it was. Thank you for letting me know. Okay. All right. Owen went back to his car. Um, I will talk about that, Michael. Owen went back to his car, saw Dora return home, and then walked back to the house and crouched under an open window. He soon overheard Dora telling a telephone caller, I can sell you several ounces of methamphetamine. So this goes to the overheard conversation, right? And that is here, right? So like very nicely laid out. Then we have all of this at the beginning, right? All of this at the beginning, we know that he doesn't have a warrant. Um, we know like where she lives, she lives in the country. Um, and he, you know, he drove to the house with a drug detection dog, waited until she left. All right. So now I want to go back through and I'm going to say, okay, well, what are all the issues that are happening in this? And this is where using something like the essay book is really helpful because what if you're like, I don't know what all to address, what order, how to do this, right? So the book really helps you. It tells you how to organize essays, but this is what it would look like. So first, uh, oh, so fourth amendment. 
All right. So Fourth Amendment, Fourth Amendment. And you guys can see the essay here, right? So I put in all of my headings. Okay, thanks, Juliana. So put it on my heading. So Fourth Amendment, right? That's what governs here, protects against unreasonable search and seizure. Government conduct, or you can say state action, either way. I kind of prefer state action, but I don't really care. And I put these up top because they apply to everything. So all of these two rules apply to everything. So it makes it a lot easier. Oh yeah, and then yeah, I would mention Fourth Amendment and I would mention the incorporation. Um, I would mention it applies to the states for the 14th Amendment. And I would do that under 14, Fourth Amendment. I don't have to break it out separately. So Fourth Amendment, state action. And then I'm gonna talk about each piece of evidence, right? Each piece of evidence. So the drug detection dog's reaction. So search, has there been a search? And do you have a reasonable expectation of privacy? I sort of put these together because you don't really like, it's very obvious that there has been a search, right? Like that's very obvious. It's not something that's usually at issue. Could you do it separately? Yes. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. Um, warrant requirement. So you need a warrant, right? Is there any exception here that applies? There's not, there's really not. Um, and then because of that, the exclusionary rule. So I'm putting in my headings. Then I have the small box, again, search, reasonable expectation of privacy. And these are different. Each place searched is different. And you have to talk about, is there a reasonable expectation of privacy in the place searched? So you have to identify, well, where is the place searched, right? And then do I have a reasonable expectation of privacy in it? Yes or no? you're usually gonna have to draw some inferences on that. So with a small box, where is it? You know, where was that located? Um, lots and lots of facts in there. So she had a reasonable expectation of privacy, requires a warrant. Then you could say, you know, he saw it because he looked through the window, right? So plain view, but it's not plain view. You could also, he used binoculars. So you could do sensory enhancing. That's something you could also throw in here because he used binoculars, but you could also just do that within plain view, talking about why it's not in plain view. Then exclusionary rule and also um, exclusionary. This is where, like I never on the first issue, talk about whether it's fruit of the poisonous tree. If there is a violation here, and um, then this also might be fruit of the poisonous tree. You may or may not have to talk about it, but just, just dropping that in here. Oh, but this should stay after step four. Then the overheard conversation. So again, is there a search, right? Or is there a search? And then um, does she have a reasonable expectation of privacy? Let's, and we're going to talk about this stuff in a minute. Um, then the warrant requirement, ex exclusionary rule, and again, fruit of the poisonous tree. Yeah, so, um, so let's talk about these issues. Let's put the facts in. So... And I put all the facts in advance, right? This is, I always feel like I'm like on the Today Show um, where they like are baking something and then magically like they come out like, oh, look, it's all done. Um, so, but we're going to talk about all of these facts and I'm going to show you like really difference in all of these facts, like how many facts are actually in here. And I'm going to unhighlight this stuff to demonstrate this. But I like all the pretty colors with the highlights like that. Okay. So... First, I'm going to start, like, I start to put in the facts at the top here. So Owen's a police officer, right? Like, state action, because he's a police officer, easy. So does she have a reasonable expectation of privacy? Does she have a reasonable expectation of privacy? So Dora's house is in the country, right? So the fact, like, they didn't just say Dora's house. They specified that it's a house in the country. What is significant about that, right? Like, in the country, usually houses are a bit further apart. Right, so that means that you are more likely to have a reasonable expectation of privacy. Yeah, um, the dog sniffed the front door. What's the front door? What's the area immediately surrounding the house? What is that called? What's that called? Curtilage, right? Yeah, there now they're all coming in. It's a curtilage. Yeah. Um, curtilage is definitely necessary. Not necessarily open fields, but you could talk about you could talk about it. Um, and then, um, expectation of privacy, Owen drove to Dee's house with a drug detection dog. He waited until she left, right? So like reasonable expectation of privacy means he waited until she left, probably means that, yeah, um, that she didn't consent, right? Because she wasn't there. So the warrant requirement, is it enough to have a hunch? What do you need to have? What do you need for a warrant? What do you need for a warrant? 
probable cause, right? Do we have probable cause here? No, we've got Owen that has a hunch, right? That does not amount to probable cause. Um, so he drives to her house to learn more, right? So that he can try to get probable cause, but he still has to do it in constitutional ways. So uh, Owen first walked the drug detection dog around the house at Owen's direction. The dog jumped on the porch, sniffed the front door and indicated the presence of meth, right? And so there's nothing that really goes under the exclusionary rule. I'm going to include, um, I just include that here because I'm going to have that at the, at the end. And I remember to include an overall conclusion as to whether the court should suppress the evidence. What do we think about suppression here? Are we going to suppress this? Is there a search of the curtilage? Yeah. Right. That was unconstitutional. Yeah. Yeah. Neutral testing master. Yeah. Yep. We're going to, we're going to suppress that. Good. Talk about the small box. So this is there a search, right? Warrant requirement. So Owen propped a ladder on the back of the house. So they didn't just say you put a ladder at the side of the house or anything. They said the back of the house. And yeah, so Alan, that's a really good call. Actually, let's go back to, let's go back to that first one for a second. Um, somebody had said, isn't the front door allowed for public to come and knock? Yes, but is that what they were doing here? They're not, it's not allowed for sniffing. So that's a great counter argument, which you got me. I was going to come back to that later, but yes. Right. Right. Not for, not for sniffing, but yeah, like you are for that purpose, but here their purpose was to come and do a search and that's not permitted. That's not permitted. So Owen propped a ladder on the back of the house. Owen climbed to the top of the ladder. They didn't just say he climbed the ladder. They said he climbed to the top of the ladder right? Because he had to go to the top of it, right? We don't know how big the ladder is, but presumably like you can't, um, presumably um, you, you know, it's a tall enough ladder, right? So you couldn't just see it from plain view. You're not at, you, it's not visible from a public vantage point, not visible from a public man, uh, vantage point. Oh, and peered into the second story window, right? So it's the second story and it's a bedroom, right? Second story, again, not visible from the from a public vantage point. And it's a bedroom window. We absolutely have a reasonable expectation of privacy in our bedroom. That's like the most private space. Or maybe not, you know, maybe the bathroom is more private. But like, that's one of the most private spaces in our houses, right? So like, yes, there's a reasonable expectation of privacy. Dora also lives in a house in the country. There's even more expectation of privacy, right? Like I am in the country right now. Like I'm out in the countryside and like my neighbors are not super close. They can't, they certainly can't hear me. Hope to not, hope not. It's almost 2 a.m. here. Um, but, um, you know, like I don't expect that people can hear my conversations, right? Versus like I normally live in New York where like people can hear me. My neighbors can hear when I'm teaching my classes very late, right? So yeah. Um, and then it's on a bedside table. Like it's right next to the bed. Um, so yeah, but it is, so you, you'd want to talk about, um, all of this is like, do you have a reasonable expectation of privacy, but also goes to plain view, a search occurred here and there is no warrant. But yeah, you would definitely, definitely talk about the plain view exception here and it doesn't work. It absolutely doesn't work. Um, binoculars. Yeah. One thing you guys will see, like when I'm in class, when I'm doing these workshops and teaching is sometimes I'll have typos in here. And I do leave them in there pretty much intentionally. Like sometimes I'll catch it like I just did now because it would look funny. But like on the bar, I don't want you fixing typos and stuff. Like occasionally here and there, like if you catch it and you just do it automatically, but I don't want you going back and like fixing it. Perfection is the enemy of completion. And I would rather, um, um, I and that I would include, uh, well, I would rather have you finish your essay and have some typos than not finish it. Because if you miss a whole issue, that's a 55 at the highest. If you miss a big issue, that's a 55 not passing. You can have some typos and get an 80. So like you can leave your typos. The exception to that is if it's so hard to read your essay that we can't figure out like what you're actually trying to say. All right. So plain view exception. Um, Owen used binoculars. And in here, you're going to talk about like sensory enhancing technology. You're going to talk about sensory enhancing technology. So then exclusionary rule, fruit of the poisonous tree, potentially. And then the overheard conversation. Um, overheard conversation. Um, so here, search, again, do you have a reasonable expectation of privacy? Um, the window, the door lives in the country, right? But the window was open, right? The window was open, right? Like literally my window is open right now. 
but like, I still don't expect that. I still do expect a fair level of privacy because I don't expect people to be eavesdropping outside my window. Dora's on the phone, but she also spoke loudly enough that Owen could hear her. So she's not trying to keep it quiet. So I definitely think there's some ambiguity here. Yes, that's correct, Mark. So again, warrant requirement, saw Dora return home, exclusionary rule of fruit of the poisonous tree. Um, yeah, he's still, he's still in the cartilage, but you can overhear it. So a cartilage is more, um, yeah, even if it's loud, you're still, he's still, he is in the cartilage, yeah. Then, so these I'm putting in all my facts. Now let's go through and let's make sure that we've used every single fact. So Owen, I have said Owen, that he's a police officer. I did use the fact that it's a hunch. The door might be selling methamphetamine. It's a crime. We don't really use that. Um, but like, do I, use, I do say it, but I don't necessarily explain, like, it's not significant necessarily that she might be selling. Well, I mean, that's what his hunch is there to prove. And then he found drugs to support that. So yeah. So from her house in the country, right? So from her house in the country, we use that multiple times. So to learn more also demonstrates that he doesn't have probable cause, but do I say that? Um, I do. Drove to Dora's house to learn more. Yeah, I do say that. Owen drove to Dora's house with a drug detection dog, waited until she left. Um, no consent. Yes, would it will be. And also in my free workshops course, Somebody asked if I do post most of my videos to YouTube, but I also have a free workshop course where there's a bunch of stuff. And I, that's where I post like my answers, like this answer will be posted in my free workshop course on my website too. So Owen first walked the drug detection dog around Dora's house. So around the house, that's the curtilage. At his direction, the dog, dog jumped on the porch. So like the fact that it was at his direction, I could also do that this is state action. So dog sniffed at O's direction. It's also okay for you to use O and for you to say P and D and all of that stuff, that's fine. But here was a fact that I hadn't actually used. At his direction, the dog jumped on the porch, sniffed the front door and indicated the presence of methamphetamine, okay? So now maybe he has probable cause, but that's still, it was, he only has probable cause in violation of the fourth amendment. Um, Oh, and then propped a ladder on the back of the house. So that's a fact that he climbed to the top. That's the fact that he peered into a second story. And the fact that it's a bedroom, a bedroom window. So do you guys see how many different unique facts are in here? So when I say to use every little fact, this is why I in class and when I'm doing workshops, I always say, make sure you use every little fact. He saw a small box on a bedside table, but could not read the label. He used binoculars to read the label. So like sensory enhancing, saw that it listed ingredients that could be used to make methamphetamine. Owen went back to his car, saw Dora return home, and then walked back to the house and crouched under an open window. So he's making sure that he's not seen. So Owen went back to his car. I don't know if we use Owen went back to his car. He soon overheard Dora telling a telephone caller, I can sell you several ounces of methamphetamine. There we have it. And the Dora is arrested and charged with selling, attempting to sell meth. You guys all follow along? Okay, good. Good, good. So then the next step is I go in and I put in my rules and I start writing my analysis. So I should add in fourth amendment up here, which I will. Um, yeah. So I add in my rule and then I do my analysis. So I take my facts. So here I had above Owen's, Owen is a police officer, right? So is a police officer. So, um, here, you want to get the buzzwords from the rule. And in my book, again, I like lay all of this out for you and how to do the analysis. I give you literally the analysis sentences um, here that, that the government or a government agent was involved. So I would say for this here, a government agent, agent was involved because Owen is a police officer. So the facts that I write in here 
but all the facts that I put in here in step four are going to become my analysis. That's why we write them in. That's exactly why we write them in. So again, um, you do this, you just go through, type in your rule, then do your analysis. You type in your rule, your analysis. And so that, this is when you go to do the writing, but let's just talk quickly about triaging. Let's talk really quickly about triaging. So if I look at this, where do we think the most issues are? And no, Michael, so I did government conduct at the top because it applies, if I do it at the top, it applies to everything. So it applies to all the different, all call one, call two, and call three. You don't have to say C supra. So when I look at these three, where do I think there's, where do I think there's controversy? Like, where is it really simple? Right? So like here, um, yeah, like I think there's definitely controversy and there's a lot of facts in call two. There's all of these different facts in here in call two. Yeah, there's the least in the overheard conversation. Dora lives in the country, the window is open, et cetera. Owen's crouching. But yeah, so if I look at this, I'm like, all right, I so I'll say that it took me 20 minutes to outline my answer. So it took me 20 minutes and I have 40 minutes left. Let's say it's going to take me 15 minutes to do the small box. Um, and then it's going to take me probably 10 minutes to do call three. It's probably going to take me 15 minutes to do call one because I have to, and like this, because it goes to everything and then just this. So I would say probably 15 minutes, 15 minutes on call two, 10 minutes on call three. And that way I'm like thinking, so I'm keeping an eye on the time and I wouldn't change the order. I wouldn't change the order that I'm doing these in because that like, I find that confusing <laughs> to be honest. Like you just need to think about like how much time do I have for each and like stick to that. And this is also why doing so much practice is incredibly important because the more practice you do, the more you know how long does this take me to do. And also practicing is memorizing. Writing full essays, writing them, it's a huge part of it. But memorize properly. Like I don't want you just making up rules and stuff right now. Come to final forecast. We will do that in final forecast. Um, but then, so we've done our triaging and then we go and we just start at the top. I'm like, all right, I have 10 minutes. And then I know if I'm like, all right, I don't have enough time to do this. I'm gonna omit my rules here. So like here, I'm like, you know, I'm going to just skip over it. Also, I'm not going to retype exclusionary rule. Like I'm just going to say C rule above, C rule above for anything that I have to do that. That is com absolutely completely fine. The bar graders expect you to do that and it's completely okay. But then you just go through and, you know, put in, uh, put in your rule, write your analysis, go to the next issue, put in your rule, write your analysis, go to the next issue. Um, the final forecast is on July 11th at 6 p.m. On July 11th at 6 p.m. And I'll just put the links again here um, for everybody. Um, let's see. If you all want that, my essay book is so helpful. Um, and I've gotten tons of good feedback. There's the essay book. Here's final forecast. There's that. Here's the mock exam as well uh yeah the forecast class is generally like an 60 to 90 minutes i keep that one like i'm really conscious of your time um so final forecast is 60 to 90 minutes and about two days before the exam you get all the or before the uh class you get all the materials because i don't want you actually using it in advance um all right i will put Let's see. Yes, this current pro essay will be posted in my, um, let me just put this back up. This answer will be posted within about 48 hours um, in my bar MD free course, which you can access at bar-md.com. Uh, let me put the link in the chat. There's the discount codes for y'all um, as well. Um, give me one second and I will get the, There's no discount for final forecast. Yeah, that's just, it's 50 bucks. Um, yeah, of course. And here is where you can access and register for, here's where you can access all of the past workshops that we've done as well.
Any questions? Yeah, you can register now, totally. It's open to register for it. The grade, the mock exam, we take about a week to get it back to you. Yeah, we'll take about a week to get it back to you. So the sooner you get it in, the better, but we just have a deadline of whatever that Sunday is, the 9th or the 10th, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Friday's workshop, you can get, if you wanna sign up for Friday's workshop, you can sign up right here. And it's in the chat. Here's, um, there's, you can register for workshops for upcoming ones. And here, if you wanna access all of our past workshops, they're all right here as well. And we'll send out, um, I'll send out an email. Yeah, it will include feedback. So the mock exam will include like comments and feedback and like an overall like tips for you in particular. Yeah. The CalBar Essays book is different from SARX because SARX is a database of every single past CalBar essay organized by topic. Let me just show y'all. Um, yeah, here's SARX. So this is really like every essay is organized by topic. So like here's property. So like if you want to look at conveyancing, these are all the issues with uh, conveyancing. If you want to do essays that test you on easements, real covenants, equitable servitudes, all of these test you on that. Um, yeah, and how do you best use the how do you best use the essay book? So a couple of different ways. One, I think it's just a really great book to like go through and like practice, um, you know, use for your rules. Definitely use for your rules and definitely look for like understanding how to analyze the issue. So if you know you want to do a free speech essay, read through the free speech, read through the free speech exceptions. Uh, or I'm sorry, read through the free speech section and then go through and do a free speech essay and then say like, okay, then look at like, how did you organize it? What did you address? Did you, looking at your analysis, did you address all of the same issues? Like, did you talk about each component? Did you organize it the same way? So that's really like, that's how I would suggest to use it. Um, <laughs> thanks, Yolanda. Archie's asleep. Um yeah, so I would do that. And then, so you can use it two ways. One, do it before you write an essay, review it, go through it, use it to memorize. And then also after you write an essay, you're gonna like refer back to it. Look at your analysis. Does your analysis look like mine? And then it's just all of those tips that I give in the footnotes. Like I give tons and tons of footnotes in it um, where I give you just lots of helpful tips on like, this is how you do this issue. This is how this issue is triggered, et cetera. So like that is really, um, that's a huge, huge um, resource too. Cause that's like all my, like the tips that I've gotten from teaching students, or, you know, like I think it must be thousands of students now over the years. Um, for ESMA, for study for the last 40 days. Um, oh, and Gabriella, thank you. You've asked that question. Um, I have a free workshop um, for the MBEs. Um, I do have one that's in my free workshops course that you can access. Um, and that that is like the, you know, I think really, really helpful. So I would definitely check that out. Um, and then for the, we also have like, I have a workshop recording for the MBE with Mary Basic and Tina Schindler. That's 99 bucks. And it's like really how to do MBE questions and really how to effectively practice. Um, advice for study schedule for the last 40 days, two essays a day, 30 MBEs a day, and one to two PTs a week. But there is a study schedule in my essay book too, that you can pick up anywhere and work out, work on. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining me. We'll send out a link with all of the, um, uh, <laughs> thanks, Kim. We'll send out a link with the resources that we mentioned today. Thanks so much for joining. And yeah, make sure you guys, if you like check out the podcast too, because there's tons of helpful tips um, in there. So subscribe to that so you can get the two episodes every week. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.